scrolling here. Yep. We're recording, so please go ahead. Okay, so I'd like to call the Finance Committee meeting of December 7, 2023 to order at 3 p.m. And uh, appreciate everybody being at the meeting on time. We have one very important agenda item in particular, which is the budget guidelines to deal with today. Um, this meeting is uh, being held um, remotely by Zoom. Um, that is permitted by the open meeting law. Members of the public have access to the meeting by Zoom. Um, but I need to remind everybody um, on the committee and in the public that we um, will be recording this meeting for both audio and for video purposes so that uh, you should be aware that it is being recorded. I am going to go through the committee members now and make sure that everybody can hear me and uh, we can hear them. Um, so, Anna. Present. And Lynn. Present. Bob. Present. Matt. Present. Bernie. Present. Kathy. Here. And Alicia. Present. Great. So thank you very much. Um, so the agenda today is proposed, unless there's uh, comments from the committee to do something different, that we will uh, see if there's any public comment that um, is to be um, wished to be offered, and then immediately move into the budget guidelines. Um, I did list the uh, transfer memo uh, the, uh, for the next council to this agenda, but uh, we don't, if we don't get time to get to it, that's um, secondary to the main purpose of the meeting. And uh, when we get to the, um, to that item, I will uh, explain my proposal for process. Um, so if there's any members of the public um, who are in the meeting who would like to offer a comment and comment up, see that there's no attendees, so I don't have to go further on that subject um, at this point. And uh, we're back to the committee. And so what I was going to propose is that we try to focus on policy, that we not do um, a wordsmithing exercise where we try and think about the wording for every item because we'll be here forever and what will be a very uh, long and boring meeting. And I don't think that it's necessary. Um, we'll talk about what we'll do for process uh, at the end again. But what I was thinking of is, is that for the wording kinds of things, people can send them to me and I will get them into a draft. Um, but um, the major thing is that we want to make sure that we have the policy questions regarding the budget right. And I appreciate that uh, Holly and Jennifer LeFountain are both here um, in case there are any questions that need technical answers or uh, informational answers from staff. Uh, so if that's a, is that an agreeable process to go forward and how to focus it, what I would do is uh, uh, Lynn was going to put the memo as it is in the packet on the screen and then we'll try and go through policy questions in the order that they're presented um, and uh, uh, go that way. Any comments? Hearing, seeing none. Lynn, you want to go yep. ahead? I'm, I'm getting there, not to worry. And it, what I've done, it, this is the memo that Andy sent, and you'll see a few places where I've actually made comments, but not discussed with anybody. Yeah, it was the, labeled as draft one, and it was the... Um, thing that was started by Kathy and followed by me, um, and which is uh, edits on 
last year's guidelines documents, we would use that as the base because a lot of it is useful again. And uh, the first section is really just um, three paragraphs. That is uh, sort of introductory piece. And I don't know that there's any real policy of significance in there. So I'm just looking for raised hands. If people have comments they want to make, because otherwise we should go on to the executive summary. So, um, are there any issues that people want to raise about the executive summary section? Um, and of course it does touch on some issues that then rep repeat later in the document in more detail. Kathy. Um, as, as Andy said, you're the blue, the blue, the blues, or largely came from me. So, but I'm looking at the comment that Andy had on the climate action and adaption plan being stuck here when for the most part, we're very general and this is one. I think it would be fine to move it to another place. What I did is I saw that we had had it two years ago and the issue that came up was um, when we say no new initiatives, whether this is considered a new initiative or initiative that we are continuing to pursue. So that's why I, um, some of this wording was literally in a document a couple of years ago. But then the other thing I did with it, um, you know, so first of all, I'm saying I would be fine that it moves to later. Um, but I wanted to make a point here that there's potential to get grants that themselves include staff to do the grants. And then the other thing is that we may be leaving money on the table. And I did this in our goals too, that, you know, if we aren't either staffed or with consultant to go after where we can get federal rebates, um, we need to do it, you know, after we've made the expenditure and um, for eligible pieces and we've got staff stretched pretty thin. So this has a um, making sure we, uh, get things. So I just want to make that comment because Andy, I saw you thought that this this elevated this above everything else and that wasn't the intention. So I would be fine moving it to later, but I think it's an important point to make. We'll stop. Yeah, no, I did. And I don't think that in the draft it got changed. Um, I think it was just moved, if I recall. Um, this, I didn't move this. This wasn't in, this wasn't in 2024 at all. Oh. I, I'm bringing it in from 2023. Um, but, but in any case, I saw your comment and, um, I was commenting okay. on, com I'm commenting on your comment. Yeah, actually, um, I should go back to the, can you go back to the first paragraph and I see some hands up so we won't bypass this section. Um, we go back up to uh, Lynn to the first page. The one thing that had come in as a suggestion in the first paragraph that I um, just realized I didn't say anything about is that in the middle of the paragraph, it says um, that we're um, make want to make progress on high priority goals. And then we list the goals, including climate action, infrastructure, safety, and economic vitality um, goals. And um, the question, the suggestion that I received was to just say high priority goals set by the council so that we don't uh, try and anticipate what the discussion would be um, about the goals when we, as, as the council is working through the goals. It, it just automatically ties the two documents together without trying to anticipate what they're going to do. So I don't know how, um, if there's any objection to doing that. Andy, uh, 
Yeah, Bernie. Uh, am I recognized? That's me, Matt. My hands up. I, uh, yeah, whoever has, if anyone has a problem with uh, doing it, just saying goals are set by the council and not trying to anticipate goals now. Uh, that's what I'm looking for. I don't okay. have a problem with that, yeah. Andy. But uh, I, I, I like that it simplifies. I was already trying to cut down the wordiness of it when it went on for a really long paragraph. So I think stating it broadly makes sense. Okay. I didn't have a problem with it, Andy. I was trying. I wanted. I raised my hand to co-sign what Kathy wrote. It was something that I had tried to highlight in my town manager evaluation. Was um, specifically about seeking funding, um, additionally fu additional funding, and especially around climate action measures. So I just wanted to kind of co-sign on with what Kathy had had uh, just been talking about. Right. And the only thing I added was that I think there's other money out there besides those tax credits. Absolutely. Uh, it's not just climate action money. It's it, that was one element of it. But I think generally speaking, that's one of that's right. been one of the concerns and something I'd like to highlight. Thanks. Totally agree, Lynn. You know that okay. it's. Yeah. Yep. So let's see. If somebody can recall exactly where it is in the I think it's in the uh, it's the next page. The next page. Yeah. Yeah. So we move down there for a second. Let's. Uh, continue with the theme we're on that section yep and and that was good so i see the edit took out the federal direct credits i think that's fine you know my point was there's money on the table and let's right. wherever it is um bring it home so there's agreement to the to what is presented there mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Because that is a an addition to that. Uh, it was not in last year. Kathy started it, and thank you. So we're okay with that. Um, is there anything else in the executive summary section that? People want to jump to now. Um, I'm just, I mean, this is just purely, I see the orange added on recent inflation costs are unlikely to be reversed. And also, I don't know. You know, in general, I'm in favor of fewer words are better. <laughs> So unless I, think, I wonder if this is just speculative. So it seems so speculative that, you know, if we so I'm not sure it adds anything. We've made the point that we're going to have a tough time covering it based on our own labor cost increases. So I'm just I'm looking to make it uh, uh, streamlined a bit. I don't think it does anything to, take, to get rid of it. So, Andy, I'll just speak to this. This, The yellow was not that there was anything wrong with this paragraph. It just feels like we're giving the reader a definition of what pot two and a half is and how it affects ours. Um, and I find it interrupts the flow to have a long paragraph. And my preference would be to put it in a footnote. But as Eddie said, we're not in the practice of putting things in fit footnotes. Um, but so I don't have any I don't have any objection to the words. It just seems like it's right in the middle. And maybe if we think every year there's a new set of readers and we need to define what two and a half is, then it's a good thing to just put it in every single year, which which was the only reason I yellow shaded it. As you see, I didn't move it anywhere. <laughs> yeah, I think though uh, the reason that I had put it in to begin with is just my experience that two and a half is what really drives budgeting still now in what how we 
go about establishing municipal budgets and limitations on municipal budgets. Matt uh, had a comment that he made in an email to me that he may want to speak to directly about uh, the effect of assuming the two and a half percent every year. But in reality, uh, it's the, you know, this is our major funding source is our property tax and it is limited what we can do with it and it place places limits on what we can do as a as a town because it, it our revenue is there and we don't get revenue in a progressive sense bernie yeah yeah i i would i would favor you know this is again this is the one thing that keeps coming up over and over and over again is prop two and a half i think everybody should be familiar with it by now um, even newbies, and um, you, you, you know, there may be just one sentence somewhere that you know where uh, that references the legislation. If somebody needs doesn't understand it, needs to go look it up. I, I would take the paragraph out. Okay, um, let me see if I can uh, come up with a way without doing it as we speak to shorten and, it to one and, sentence. Andy, Anna has her hands up too. Anna has her hands Anna. up. Yeah, I was just going to say, Andy, I think a footnote would be fine, even if it were referencing a web page like the through the state where folks can learn more. Um, because I think, you know, um, Bernie, I hear you, but I think this is one place where people might be introduced to it for the first time. And so even if we don't, you know, as, as a newbie, they don't necessarily need to get the entire thing here. But I think if we could link to something, um, that, that would be helpful. Just saying you know, prop two and a half was established, blah, blah, blah. Um, get it to one sentence and then say, have a footnote that says reference and then have a website. I think that would suffice, but I'd like to give people the opportunity to get that full um, kind of download of information should they need it. It doesn't need to be in the report, but I think it needs to link to it. Yeah, that, that's fine. Okay. Look at that compromise, y'all, on a Thursday afternoon. Yeah, no, I think that's fine. As so I say, I will make sure that it ends up being at most one sentence, and I'll figure it out. And we'll have one opportunity when we get to there'll be opportunity for review because I'm going to work on it as quickly as I can after after the meeting so that we don't have a long period of time. So going on, Matt, to you and. Thanks, Andy. Yeah. So I want to just clarify, since you brought it up, my my comment to you is a, a shade more nuanced than um, questioning two and a half. What what I was trying to introduce was um, sort of a, 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 a comparison of previous budgets that had um, drawn, I think it was 63 percent of the revenue was from property tax and 11% was from local receipts. That was the 20, that was from the financial indicators pr presentation. Um, and I think that that ratio of property tax to receipts is an interesting thing for us to talk about from a fiscal policy perspective in terms of something that's got three different um, pieces to it. You know, it has, obviously it has the property tax revenue piece. It has the receipts piece. And then it has the overall spending piece. So any you know any of those three pieces could affect that ratio. Um, and I think it would be it might be. I I really genuinely would like to hear sort of the thoughts of more experienced folks. Um, but it might be something that that could be introduced in budget guidelines that would set um, set a goal for the town manager to try to start addressing the burden on taxpayers, property the property tax burden. Um, but but giving you know a goal with with a few different mechanisms, a few different ways to work on it, um, because I mean that's that's certainly one thing that I just I heard so many times, um, you know during the the past six months was you know who who is paying attention to the property tax burden and what's being done about it, um, and I don't think it's any one thing. I certainly don't think it's as simple as you know uh, not doing our two and a half percent this year. You know I, I think it's I think it's a much more complicated notion than that. Um, so, and I don't, I don't know that we, I, I was actually looking at it on the next page and in the, in sort of deeper into the revenue discussion, but since you brought it up now, I, I'll just, I'll just introduce it there. And, um, you, you know, I, I had mentioned it to you, I mentioned it to Lynn as well. And, 
you know, if folks want to speak about it, we can we can hold off on the discussion until a, you know a little bit further into the document. But I wanted to kind of get the idea out there, you know, in in its entirety since you mentioned it. And and, and Matt, I think it's a bigger issue than you've just raised because the other piece is uh, the share of uh, government of state money that comes into us. You know, if you, if you go back twenty years, it was a bigger share. You know, just yeah. in. Some things we're maybe more in control of than others, direct control, but indirect control there there's so I think it belongs later if we say anything. The, yeah. No, that, that's right, Kathy. And actually, I mean the, the numbers that I was introducing, 2014 was uh 63 and eleven, so that makes 74 percent, you know, and and last year was uh 68 and seven, which is 75 percent. So I mean, you're absolutely right. I, what I was what I was doing by identifying those two streams of, of was trying to narrow down those things that are within our control or at least our significant influence. Um, you know, obviously policy advocacy at the state and federal level is important work as well. But I think when we're talking about budgeting guidelines, you know, those are the two sources of revenue that we have the most direct impact on. Uh, but you're absolutely right. It's, I mean, it's certainly a multi, multi-stream question. Yeah, um, Andy, remember, I can't raise my hand. Yes. Uh, I want to just say I found uh, Matt's concept pretty appealing, but I do want to make sure we we save time to discuss it because it, it really is almost becomes a financial policy guideline, not just one year. Right. There is a little bit of that, of course, in this document, but you know, we do it once a year because of the budget cycle. Right. It's also a question of community education because I think that all of us as counselors need to explain to our constituents why the burden is so heavy on residential free tax. Mm -hmm. You know, that comes to a number of things. Uh, one is our lack of... Uh, opportunities for building commercial development right. and another is as matt pointed out uh the fact that some of our other revenue streams uh that are locally driven like restaurant tax and uh hotel motel taxes uh driven by the availability of that revenue and the businesses that can generate it. Uh, and, and so that there, anything that we do that is going to help is probably going to be a long trek and um, involve some real creative approaches. What Kathy was mentioning about trying can, to can we just, Could we continue my request Bernie's got his hand up continue to go through this because there may be a good place to put some of this if we yeah. this it doesn't quite fit here but Bernie you I didn't mean to jump over I your that, that's okay I'm just um I'm, I'm sitting back and listening because another piece of this that's key critical is land use I mean there's been land use decisions yeah. that made by the town by previous town administrators and time by town meeting that really do tie hands. And um, when you try to rework the land use restrictions or re requirements, uh, there's lots of yelling and screaming that we want to keep it just the way it is. So we have an interesting situation where we have almost half of our property uh, is in the hands of others that can't be taxed. Um, we have a relatively small uh, proportion of our population that are taxpayers because of half of our population is student and transient. Um, and then you have our land use regulations because we like to think we're a nice, this nice little bu bucolic community that can exist in the middle of, uh, we, we exist in the middle of our own um, universe. So, um, and that we're immune from economic forces. So pe people, I, uh, <laughs> people really need to think about, um, they really think about all those things. They really think about land use. And um, uh, where and remind uh, get reminded that the town is part of a larger economy. And we may value we may value Amherst against degree, but the people who can 
cause some development or cause us to, to be in a better position to uh, raise tax revenues may not share that that value in economic terms. So I, I do think just this, this risk going into a larger debate, because m one of the points I point out is I've got some cities that do very dense land use and they can't buy and their budget each year either because of right. rising expenses. So the the big thing the big thing is that more than half of our land has no tax taxes on it when we put our conservation land and you know we we are um property tax poor when it comes to taxable property <laughs> well it, it, the the towns in Massachusetts are dependent on the wealth tax what the wealth being the property and and how the property is developed and if you can't develop half of your property then you know, or if it's if it's removed from your ability to tax, yeah, then you are constrained, and, and it's an, an interesting problem. Yeah, so that's a huge constraint. So, okay, shall we move on? Yep. So then we're getting into the revenue projections, which is really probably where one place we could talk about uh, some of the issues that have just been raised about, or we could do it later when we get to um, it, towards the end of the document and talk about future rec recommendations. But we have a pretty clear statement, third third paragraph that commercial property is limited and more than half their property is tax exempt institutions or conservation. So the burden of the tax falls on residents and small businesses. I mean, it's a pretty, it's not a very long paragraph, but it states the box we're in. Andy? Yeah. Just look at the first paragraph of that page, um, which is the first paragraph is where I was playing with um, that statement. But I, I noticed the number is 69% in your first se sentence. Is that a rounding? Does it round up to 69%? Um, I checked against, I checked the numbers for this year based upon the financial indicators presentation. And okay. All right. um, it changed. It did increase up to 69 okay um so i had i had suggested that that sentence that i sent you um could potentially just kind of attach to the bottom of this first paragraph here so you know just just summarizing again you know in fy14 and we could we could cite the um indicators presentation in FY14, property tax revenue represented 63% of the overall town budget and local receipts re represented 11%. In FY23, it represented, I guess, 69% and local receipts represented 7%. The ratio of property tax revenue to local receipts is an important one in assessing the fiscal health of the town. Uh, if this could be maintained at a constant level, it might represent an effort to ease the burden on property tax. Um, and again, I, you know, I mean, I, I just offer this as kind of a consideration it's a it's a revenue consideration because we can talk about you know efforts to increase local receipts, um, and I you know I I think uh, that's that's a different conversation, but I, I think it's an important one. Um, it's it's a revenue, and of course, property tax is also a revenue issue, and then but it also can be a you know obviously a, a budgeting um, consideration as well. I mean, a, a spending consideration that is. So anyway, that's one place that I had suggest I had thought it might it might fit. Uh, Matt, would you send me that, please? Yes, and it helps with me as you do that. <clears throat> And 
and just Lynn, if you if you put it in, just be, if if anyone puts it in, so it doesn't in, interfere with the flow. I'm not objecting to putting in because um, sixty nine percent is a big number, and the it's the new growth number is put in as a pretty conservative number. So I would put it right after all of that rather than in the middle of it. You know, the sentence that Matt, it, Matt. Would, would you put it here or at the end? At the end, yeah. Okay, where I have it, sentence. It, yeah, because the first several are all related to the property tax. Um, and then the rest is, by the way, here's the other. So Matt, you're, yeah, okay, got it. So, just make sure it's 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 yeah. We we'll, we we'll have to double check all the numbers. <laughs> okay. Then moving along. I think that uh, confer just confirm. So I'm trying to confirm some stuff too. Council supports continuation of the policy that reserves funds should not be used to support recurring expenses for reasons we explained in the next section. Obviously we'll come back at it again, but um, it comes up, we did sort of put it into the summary as well as into the uh, expense section. And the point is obvious. Once you do it, you deplete the the reserves and you don't have them to use the next year to continue the same program. You haven't built in stable funding. Bob? Yeah, I just wanted to, um, in the paragraph that uh, talks in, about pilots, um, I, I remember last year pilot was a four letter word. So um, I think it's, it's there on that page. Um, it's section yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, I just wanted to say or make add to that just or make uh, other contributions. Um, it doesn't have to be cash contributions. Um, okay. They could give us land. They could give us, you know, uh, other kinds of support. Um, yep. Okay. We'll get it in one place or another. Um, because I think that our explanation of pilots later is a little more complete. Okay. Or call. I only put this um, thing right here because I just, somebody, when we get all done, needs to check if the numbering's all the same. Yeah, yeah no, I'll, and I'll double check. I can, I did double check Andy's 69%. It is 69, but I, page numbers and cross references will make sure we still have those sections. Yeah, some of that waits to the end because uh, as you add and subtract language, you change pagination. Yep. Percentages that are based on something else is worth checking right away. Oh yeah, no, the pages can't go in yet. Well, they have to constantly be changed. Sometimes I do page you know, as you did this uh, code to remind me to go back and check. So we're on to the expenses section, um, which is so, very brief because. Um, I actually, I actually. The, the, that was removed for the general budgeting policy. That's right. The third. I changed, I changed just so anyone knows why I did this is we talk about expenditures later. So it didn't feel he, that it goes here. So um, it just felt redundant 
that's why it's gone. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. I need to make sure that Athena, that you know that Alicia had to leave the meeting. Oh, I didn't catch that. Thanks for mentioning it. Did Alicia pardon? Alicia had to leave the meeting. Oh. Um, so we get into the general budgeting policy section. I had one thing here. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It was a minor one. Um, Andy rightfully deleted the yellow stuff. I don't want anything about the library in there. So I'm fine with taking it out. I did, I did this, working on this a month ago. Sorry, <laughs> two weeks ago. Anyway. Yeah, we wanted to bring it into where we were now. Yeah. So and you know, the course, the we have to anticipate too, because by the time the council approves it, there will be some changes also. So do we have to project what so, we think? so so what you're seeing is cuts or sometimes it was just that was last year's story. It's all over, you know. So mm -hmm. we were saying that that so when you're seeing some of the things that were cut out of the document were we we didn't yet have a school contract and other pieces. We didn't want to get it. So I'm I'll stay on this page, but Lynn started to scroll to the next one. I think people could see what I'd what I'd done. Yeah. 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 Matt Holloway has his hand up. Yeah. I'm not sure exactly which section we are in, um, but I'm looking at the general budgeting policy section. Are we there yet, Andy? Yeah, yeah. we are. I thought so. Um, so we have this first paragraph, which I like because it does kind of capture a multi-year Crest DEI um, and the firefighter fund. I think that's that's smart and a nice way to get a little bit broader perspective than just the year by year. Um, but it also captures where we're at this coming year or this year. Um, and are we clear enough? I think, I mean, CREST and DEI, we know are, are general fund um, items. I mean, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the four firefighter EMT positions, those are somewhat um, supported by the strategic agreement. Correct. That's correct. So, yes. I mean, do we want to at all call out those three different um, new or newish expense areas by, you know, by dedicated funding sources, or is that is that too uh, is that unnecessary? Well, Press and DEI are downtown departments, and we're essentially recognizing that they are departments that are not contingent upon any outside funding. They have to come into the budget totally. But, he, but you could add a sentence here for right after this smooth the transition, you could say the strategic agreement from UMass will help support the firefighters, right? You know, yeah. you know, because that's that, you know, so we're losing the ARPA money that allowed us to put four in, but we've got some money coming. And so it's not saying it covers it, but we'll help support it. Yeah, I, I just think it's a helpful, it's, a, it's an appropriate acknowledgement of that effort. You know, mm -hmm. that, that I agree. I, I agree with that as well, since we repeatedly call on... Uh, <laughs> You know, getting more re financial resources from uh, from UMass and the state. It's nice to acknowledge 
that there's been some work done and there's some progress in that area. And Lynn, just wordsmithing, I would say will help because we're talking about the coming year instead of help, will help. Yep. Yeah, just, I would just put the word, yeah. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, no, I think that's... Uh... And I made a change in the next paragraph because I think you said major in education. You said with yeah. education yeah. and it's higher ed. I mean, yeah. we're not we're not trying to tax the common school. <laughs> it was a joke. <laughs> oh, why not? Well, um, All of these places where we refer to stabilization funds and free cash, just make sure the years are right. Yeah, I, I, for instance, I wasn't good at, yeah, I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't always changing, fixing the yeah. year. So that ends that section. Andy, I have a question about the, um, the, percentage of re levy we're going to go to capital. I mean, is that, that's a goal, right? Um, we don't know that we can can actually do that. Can, can we <laughs> this year? I'm not yeah, sure that we'll be able to. Uh, that's a question I think that you have to revisit every year. When that was first established as a goal, to get it higher, it was probably under just around 7%. And uh, it was a goal was established to move it to 10%. And it took until last, this current year that we're in now, to get it to 10%. After having established that goal uh, back when we still had town meeting. Well, but this... In answer, Bob, this is in the guideline. So we could say the guideline has the 10.5. So we support the recommendation that you included in the in the guidelines would be a way to do it. Um, and and then flip side, Bob, if we don't put two at 10 and a half in this year and we vote the library, we're going to be in trouble. <laughs> we... <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, you know, I, I don't know, I disagree with that. I you know, so so it is. It's a goal, but right now, Paul and company has literally put ten and a half in in the table that we're referencing for right. people. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah, and, and no, I'm aware of that. It's just, I, I mean, I think, I think, I think it's fine. I just wanted to make sure that we keep our eye on that because I, I'm not sure we're going to be able to make ten and a half percent this year. You know, and, and then the other thing is that that was the one we when we when we hit the wall a couple of years ago, that's where we cut, you know, so unless, yes. you know, it is so mm -hmm. we could put uh, unless this needs to be adjusted and we expect you'll come back to us if it needs to be adjusted or something about that, you know, if we can't maintain it. I think that's assumed. I don't think you need to even say it. I wouldn't, okay. I wouldn't put that in there because. <laughs> okay. You don't want to you don't want to give too much away. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's reality. What we end up with is that we have this big chunk of capital needs. Then we want to maintain current programs that, because we assume that we have them because they're valuable and we have good people working to do do that work. And then we always have ideas from the community and from the council to do something else. And that's the, as we get into that, let's do this new initiative that we're trying to do some protection. Because right. when we realize that you start going that route and the other two are um, at risk or you yeah. can't do it. So Bob, are you comfortable 
leaving it written the way it is, or we should say as recommended yeah. in the guidelines? Yeah. I think I think we I we should just leave it as is. I just wanted to make sure that we understood that this is, you know, we may or may may not make it this year, and we need to be prepared as a committee to to address that. Matt has Kathy's point that uh, if we uh, we should go forward with the library and cut the ten and a half percent we put other things at great risk. Understood. It's, it's going to be a tough discussion if that were ever to happen. Matt's got his hand up, Andy. Yeah, go ahead, Thank Matt. Yeah, thanks, Kathy. Yeah, I think, I mean, uh, personally, you know, only strengthening that 10 and a half, I think is the only, the only thing I would support here. But um, I actually wanted to back up to the previous paragraph about cannabis. Um, so making a decision about the funding structure um, has been a, a carryover. Um, however, you know, it seems likely that this coming incoming council will be starting to spend or or design a program to spend money out of the reparation stabiliz stabilization account. And I personally do not fully understand the implications of that on the account, on the interest. No, none of us do. We haven't seen the model yet to project sort of what the impacts will be. Of spending that money, um, and so I think there's there is an element of uncertainty on that account, on that stabilization account that we should at least acknowledge in these guidelines. Um, and and I I don't think until we see any projections, we have I mean we we put this aside until the new year, but um, but that I just want to flag for everybody that that that's certainly going to be something um, that's a variable in in next year's in this coming year's budget. Mm -hmm. I guess I would leave the wording as is, because this is the revenue stream. The commitment to do the cannabis money is where we are right now. But you're so that's the guideline, right? We don't have any other guidance to provide right now, but you're right that something might change next year. <laughs> well, maybe, Kathy, after the after the words two million in the middle of that paragraph. So let me just I'm just gonna read it just to give a flow. Um on June 27th, the council established a goal that we make transfers to the fund annually based upon the financial health of the town in an amount equal to the certified cannabis tax revenue for the previous year, but not to exceed 205000 until such a time as the town's contribution equals $2 million, period. However, uh, a proposal has come forward from the, cannabis, from the uh, uh, Repara Reparations Committee um, to begin spending money out of this account sooner and you know the town manager will need to be prepared for you know so just i just want to acknowledge the uncertainty because i think it it actually very well may touch this coming year's budget um but i think that can i just say i think that's a different issue because this says the town's contribution equals two million and it doesn't say it's an endowment fund in other words we just keep a clock on how much we add every year and if they spent the wad, you know, it doesn't have anything about the withdrawals. This is right. This is That's really right. just flow in. When we wrote this last year, there was no withdrawal on the table. So I mean, but what I'm saying is, last year, the, last year, this the only year. the only commitment we have that's standing right now is to to regularly putting up money until it gets to two million. And now that we're at a hundred thousand rather than two hundred a year, it'll take longer. Um, so there's nothing that has changed from that now, but there is a potential that they'll start drawing on those funds earlier than before. And that's a, it, to me, it's just a totally different issue than. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I hear your point. Is there, a, is there a section in here that's more appropriate to speak to the health of the fund than this, than this section? Because I'm speaking to the health of the fund and, and sort of, you know, what, what impact, I mean, I realized twelve on December seventh, twenty twenty three. There's, there's no commitment to withdrawal, but I think that the general direction is going to be by, you know. It may be the proposal that they might start drawing on. It goes in this next section is expenses for operations. That there's a yeah. place that, you know, during the year there may because it doesn't really affect the operating fund at all. It just is drawing down on that, other, that 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 special reserve. That's, That's right. Yeah. That, that's that where, I think a better place to put it. 
when you get there, tell me where you want. Okay. Are we all in agreement that 3% for each uh, of the major areas is what we want? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Keep going then. So I see Kathy's drafting note has been struck, but uh, you know, it, it struck me, not no pun intended, um, you know, as a, as a, I mean, I don't think that the, you know, there's not, not going to be any change in salaries and certainly all the costs um, in terms of temporary storage for the library. It's, you know, it's a, it's a hard argument to make that the operating budget of the library will go down, but it's a provocative, you know, I I actually asked the question and it has been soundly answered since I wrote. <laughs> okay. And I, okay. I told, Fair I told, a good I told yeah. Andy to go ahead and just redline it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. It works for me. Glad you asked. <laughs> Here's another one of those places where Kathy said, yeah, that was what that was last year. This is this year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when I uh, cut, let me just think, Andy's, I don't know which was mine, but because of that earlier paragraph on climate, it said, we're doing this with investments in all this. I was wherever possible trying to not say things more than once. Mm -hmm. And so it says it up in that earlier one that in our capital budget, we've been uh, moving toward all of this. So that's wasn't that that isn't true. It's just, it's already been said. Mm -hmm. Right. And again, repetitive. <laughs> I, I added a few words in on the crest thing. I, I've been very strongly urging, not just to, is it working based on what we thought it was, but is it effective? And right. so I put program evaluation to assess effectiveness. And, you know, and did you put the potential of teamwork or did I? Because you, you did. Know, way, way back in LEAP, there was never the thought that they would be totally separate. And right. just so everyone knows, if you look at what Northampton's been doing in Greenfield, they've got much more, they've got evidence they're making a difference and they got, they had to get it up running. But some of it is um, two people going out in an unmarked car, one of a police before the handoff happens. So we've got a model that has been keeping things separate and we're, but so I agree, Lynn, with what you put. I, I just think we need to we need to think of what what could make this work well. Yeah. Yeah. Interestingly, the uh, the, the uh, Cahoots program, which is the original community responder program on Eugene, yes. um, that's funded through the Eugene Police Department. Um, I've got really big concerns with with that framing. Actually, I think that was one of the original things that CSW CSWG really emphasized was that they were not co responders. Um, and I, I want to just caution us as to how we're framing this as to not change the direction of the program in our financial guidelines. I think that it's it's really important that these are this is not it's it's not funded through the police department. There's there's a lot of reasons why that's that's important. Um, and I, I this sentence stands out to me in a concerning way. Um, and so I, I'm I want to look back specifically. I think that there's a difference between working as, you know, 
two different departments in the same town and then the collaborative needs of that and working together as a team. Um, and I think that the, there's a lot that comes between those two things, um, or sorry, not as a team, as co-responders. Um, and so I, I would caution our financial guidelines as, in, as a way from possibly changing a program directive. And I worry that that's what this does. They're going to be they're going to be co-responders. It's it, they're it, not. A, it's it, not a co-responder model. For me. In it's certain, not. well, the model the model that was in the CSW report is flawed. What happens in real life is there are going to be times when they will be co-responders, and we have to be careful not to confuse commu the community this community response program with two, like Greenfield or other towns where they have a mental health counselor who rides along with the police officer. Right. Um, that's a I different thing altogether, a different thing altogether. But to think that Crest will operate independently, will never interact with the police and is that's is it, that's not true. There there will be again with Cahoots, which is run by a clinic, fully fledged mental health clinic, um uh there is an overlap between uh, when between they're, they're being co-responders with uh, the police and being co-responders with the the, uh, the emergency medical services, even right. though the Cahoots, Cahoots team has a, a health person, a nurse, uh, a nurse practitioner as part of the, the, the two person response team. So I wouldn't hold on to the CSW model because there's a lot of problems with that. And I think uh, Cress, if it's going to be successful, is going to have to evolve, and we're going to have to look at how successful it is. And but Bernie, more that's not up, but that is not up to the finance committee, and I worry that writing it in the finance report, we are acting as if the finance committee gets to decide how this program operates. And so the Cress responders are not trained mental health professionals; they are not the co-responder like we have through CSO. And so I just, what I would like to caution us against is dictating the, the functioning of a department through the budget guidelines. That's my concern. I don't disagree with you that the model presented by the CSWG will need to evolve, but we should not prescribe that evolution through the financial guidelines. And so I, I worry that we, in the phrasing of this, and I can try to think of a different sentence in the next 10 minutes, but um, the phrasing of this, I worry that it is it, it to me reads as too directive towards the operations of a department. That's what I I'm just, trying to say. Anna, I just want to say that that last sentence, the law enforcement, blah, 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 that, that was in last year's guidelines. And we all, mm -hmm. it, 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 that, that's not new wording. Um, mm -hmm. That, that, that is wording mm -hmm. that we saw last year and the whole council signed off on. I understand that. And I'm, I'm just pointing it out this, this year, it, it strikes me differently. I think, you know, that's something that I, 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 I hear you. And I don't think that the last sentence specifically is bad. And I see that it's the same. I mean, I hear you that it's the same one. I just, I caution us as how it was just described on this call by this committee is not necessarily okay. what I think is the right message for the finance committee to send. So I, I would love to think about some clarification on that. So it's the verbalization and maybe the second on the sentence above it where the blue ads and potential teamwork just can do, do a period after Crest staffing needs period. And then- Yeah, I think that's fine. I, um, yeah. See, Lynn, it, right at the end of the top of the page, assess effectiveness and assessment of police and staff staffing needs period. And then just take out that other, because we say the teamwork again in the interest of not saying things twice, we already- have the sentence that was in there last year from leap yep do you i i just wrote that we needed to identify when the leap report was because there may be others down the road mm -hmm. um it was i just had it up yeah um so 21 I, um we're kind of we're kind of outside of the hand raising component yeah, it's hard, it's up a little, which is fine you know I, i'm happy to jump into um, I am, I, I am continue to be curious about sort of the evaluation, the crest evaluation. And, and I, that I think is something that, um, should really steer the, um, staffing conversation. And so I think, um, yeah, I mean, I, th I think that, you know, the financial dimension should be a part of that evaluation and, and, 
I see there's an evaluation to assess effectiveness. I actually think Anna, to Anna's point, you know, the the effectiveness of the program is not sort of that's outside the purview of this of these guidelines, but the um, the financial impact of the program, you know, is. So I, I don't know if there's a way that we can sort of introduce a seek out some quantitative metrics. Um, you know, one one thing that I have shared with with several folks is, um, you know, Greenfield program, for example. You know, I recently heard read an article where they talk about the number of diver diversionary calls. You know, calls that were diverted off the police and into their mental health team. That's you know, I would like to see some kind of metrics, quantitative data, um, which then can be translated into dollars. And I think you know is an appropriate metric for fiscal guidelines and and to guide staffing. Um, so I don't I don't know on the fly, Lynn. If, I don't know if that's a helpful uh, framing for for the issue, but. I just, I'm just wondering, about, instead of this bit that says assess effectiveness. Um, but don't you think that's what effectiveness is? What do you, I I guess I, that's how I interpret that word. So I think you're inter interpreting it differently. Um, I, yeah, maybe I'm just looking to refine it. I don't, I, I, yes, I, I think effectiveness, but but honestly, if I'm a casual reader, and particularly if I'm somebody who is sensitive to, you know, Crest being like under attack program, what, you know, if I'm sensitive and defensive to the, to the program and, and the structural integrity, you know, effectiveness can mean many things, right? Effectiveness can be, you know, the perceived impact of this visit on this one person. You know what I mean? So I think quantif quantifying the um, quantifying the program's activities and then translating that into staffing is a more appropriate financial lens to look at this with. Yeah, I I I, I would agree, but I, I'm I'm not. Um... I'm not upset by the uh, the use of the term, you know, effectiveness. I mean, every department, every town department should be demonstrating its effectiveness. Um, and uh, I think in this case, where we're trying to build a new service, having benchmarks, having data um, and, and is is important. And that's what has to happen. I, I sort of cringe every time I hear a call that we need 24-7. There's no evidence of that. Um, so let's let's you know, as we as we build a new department, let's see, and we can rely on the folks from LEAP. We can we have a major research university just down the street. Uh, we can get some ways of measuring effectiveness, and, and and that means how many calls are diverted, who's being helped. Um, you know, so that that would be that's fine. I'm not, I'm not hearing my, like a rousing support for I, the idea, I, but I might, I might pop. I'm not work. going to I'll put my long-term program evaluation per hat on, but just to say that programs when they are, um, when they start should have goals and they're, they should be evaluated based on those goals. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to jump. I, I agree, Lynn, I think, and to Matt's point, it's tough because I, I agree that, saying the you know that the program evaluation needs to be in there could step beyond the purview of this committee and um it's it's one of those tough things and i hope i don't sound like i'm you know walking back my main point of what i said earlier but to for this for us to only emphasize the financial impact also minimizes the other important elements of its of the impact right so like so so it's tough to to say solely financial impact and I don't want to minimize all the other things about it um and so I I agree with Lynn like that's part of it um and I I I don't necessarily have an issue with the with the framing of program evaluation and I I'm trying to remember back and maybe um other folks know uh what the timeline is for the um for that initial um evaluation that was being worked through with the Donahue Institute um, and see, one of the reasons I want to put this in here, because I'm not clear that it's been active. That's I, what I'm, if it was I'm feeling. I'm feeling it may have been dropped. Okay. So that's, well, that's, that's, that's kind that's of exactly where I'm going. It, my, my impression is that what, what Donahue provided was guidelines for the, this is the sort of metric you should be gathering. And yeah. then it was dropped. So that's yes. why I am actually, you know, nudging further on this quantify, you know, instead of assess, say quantify effectiveness, 
Um, you know, because I, I don't think that we're going to be getting a report anytime soon <laughs> or ever. I don't think any report is forthcoming from that contract. I I don't think it was expected to. Okay. That's yeah. And, and I, I did, but that was an assumption that I didn't really, you know, have any reason yeah. to, I guess. The other thing is that as much as we're the finance committee and these are financial guidelines, the these get approved by the entire council. Yep. And they would they I think of this as kind of with my full council hat on. So Anna, thanks. I, I know you do evaluation as well. One of the questions, if sorry. We were also trying to make sure that uh, we send out a warning to the to the world um, and to the people who are saying it was originally envisioned as a 24 seven program. We need to have adequate staff so that we can have responders available 24 seven. And if we have to cut the police department, we should do it because um, this is a more effective way to respond to a segment of the need. And uh, we're, we're trying to sort of come up with um, some method of saying, hey, wait a minute, we got to evaluate that better. I, you know, I, I think we're going too far with this discussion, to tell you the truth. I mean, Lynn, if there's a better wording for assess effectiveness, fine. Um, I think we're just saying that we we need to assess both the police and press. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we have if we have staffing shortage, if we have people on burnout in different departments, we need to worry about. You know, so I think it's maybe Lynn, your words added read it a red flag um, rather than. <laughs> should be adjusted in future years based on experience and assessment, you know, but, but in any case, I just think this is just guidelines. And so we, we are hoping that next year is better than this year is the way I would put it. <laughs> That's fair. Lynn, can, Anna, I make, yeah. can I make a Go ahead. So I think one of the things that we're kind of ignoring here is, are the other elements of public safety that Crest does interface with quite often. And so I'm wondering if we shift the, instead of the sentence that is, pinging in my brain, and I know it was in there last year, but it's pinging in my brain, is um, the need for community responders and police to work together. I, I guess I'm wondering if we can say something, I mean, I guess, I don't know if this is still emphasizing what the LEAP report um, did, and I'm trying to find the exact sentence that this is referring to, but I, I'm wondering if it's, you know, we recognize the need for, a com for community responders who are a part of a robust community safety um, network or something that that's emphasizing because what the leap report also talks about is calls from the fire department that Cress eventually might might respond to and so I think I don't I don't want to just have it be um, I don't know just those two because it is and that's been the emphasis of the program from the start is that it is part of our community safety network so even if it's just you know um, I for a robust community safety that includes that includes crest the fire department police it just put them yeah. all in yeah exactly i i mean because i i actually lena i was pitching it for the end not not there but I, it's fine either place i think you could just take out those last sentences um for the sake of not being repetitive but this, i think that, yeah i just i wanted to emphasize that 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 was the vision that paul's always presented it as as one of the legs of our public safety stool table. I don't know. He uses it as a branches, maybe. So you want this where? Uh, instead of the, we need community responders and police who work together. I was just saying we need community responders as part of a robust community safety team. That's all. Instead of just police who work together because they do also work together with fire. Presumably, that, that makes that that makes good sense. And again, um, so do you want this being sentence? evaluated? Yes, right. I think in the budget, don't we refer to all three departments under public safety? We do. So Sorry, I public think public those are the words we should use: public safety. Yep. Thank you. Sorry, Andy. Okay. okay. 
Now, where do you want this? Okay, I would like you to move that to, I, I would honestly take out the second to last sentence and replace it with that. But I don't know if people want to refer back to the leap report if, if folks are attached to that. It sounds like there's been a lot of evolution since the leap report. And so I wouldn't be upset about. I don't, I'm, maybe we put it right before that and leave it in there. Yeah, because the leap report had a lot of this wording in it. It uh, did, absolutely. You know, and maybe not this wording. I mean, they were talking about, um, yeah. And some of it is, well, yeah, I, it's, it's just such a good report. I don't want to lose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. I'm fine referencing it. How about just evaluation to assess effectiveness? That sounds fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. I. This is grammatically not something most people want to do. I would want to go like and the. That's fine. I'm trying to move us off of here so we don't get yeah. stuck on wordsmithing. That's um, what I was trying to avoid, but um, yeah, because the next section is capital and yeah, but we're not there yet because Kathy said something here that triggered something for me. The finance committee, Trevor. Okay, that's Andy put that in because I forgot to. This is the specific right. the the motion we passed that is putting money in the budget. Um, right. Yeah. I, but I, we I didn't also, write that line. I just purely wanted okay. to not forget that we <laughs> needed to put it in the guidelines. Yeah. I think I might take the quotes out and not quote the motion as it was worded because it's a rather confusing wording, but get the substance in because ultimately what the council, it was on this motion, I believe, and that was passed, uh, fairly substantial vote. Um, if you just say the, the council recommended, including, you can just make a very, including. But the finance committee, including the draft financial guidelines, rec recommendation okay. to include the amount. Yeah. $4,000. And you don't need to put the votes. You not to put not maybe I did write this, but you don't need to put the votes. I can't. I it's a hard to imagine that I put that those. No, I in. think I put that in because <laughs> I went. What happened was is that yeah. I had Athena sent me yeah. the section of the draft minutes for that date because we haven't seen the draft minutes as a council yet, and then I was just. Um, Kind of late at night is one of my last acts trying to get this done by taking <laughs> the, the the draft minutes and make it a paragraph. So I, I'm maybe I'm just being dense, but why is this particular item a part of our guidelines package? I mean, because I the like council it's... voted that they should be. Council is very specific. Yeah. It's an, increase no, in, yeah, excuse me. I'm, I'm it's an increase in the budget, you know, so we're telling, uh, we're, we're not making any recommendations anywhere except for increase the budget here. Um, the council, he's got red, he's got penciled in council payment and he needs to add, he, town manager needs to add 64,000 if he hasn't already. Okay, I get and are we doing that? So, so every time that the council proposes any 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 new, I'll spend. I mean, I just feel like it's a 
it's a very specific thing to be calling out here. Um, amongst, it, you know, it, a, it is, a but it's a two hundred million dollar um, budget. You know, so yeah, it, it's, it just, it's kind of a first. The only time this happened is when we brought in Cress, where we had to add money to the budget, but it wasn't in advance this way. This is kind of a reminder that this has got to be, as he develops the budget, he has to have this in the budget. Or maybe we should say- okay. I mean, don't, it's don't an increase on, on a, a line item that was already in the budget. Yes. If, I mean, if others feel like it's it's vital to have it in the guide, it doesn't feel like a guideline. It feels like a very specific, you know, yeah, line item increase. Except for the fact that- uh... We can't we can't avoid the fact that the council voted seven to two to include this ask the finance committee to include put it in the guidelines. <laughs> okay, so the motion was actually to put it in the guidelines. I didn't realize. Yeah, that. yeah. yeah it, it, what's it, in the quotes it, now? Part of which has been deleted to to make it read better. But what's in the quotes now was the motion that was okay. All right, I, I didn't realize that. Was. Yeah, it was, I, it, was a, okay. it was a more than odd moment, Matt. That's, yeah. yeah, that is odd. Okay, all right, all right, thank you. Can I raise two issues? We never voted, but when we discussed the Charter Review Committee, we said they might need funds. And at that point, it was, well, then that should be in the financial guidelines. It wasn't a vote. So yeah, that was, uh, then what would they need? They would need funds for a consultant. That, I mean, just the, something like the uh, Charter Review Committee may need funds to support the uh, charge from the charge. Can I ask a very pointed question? And that is, do we want to test out the council through the guideline draft as to whether the, whether or not they're willing to entertain increase for school committee and library? Oh, actually, library doesn't get paid. I wouldn't put it here. Okay. So... Uh... We do know that if it's not included in the budget, it can't happen. Right. That's my point. Right, but I, I, I wouldn't put it, uh, I guess I, I would oppose putting it in here. <laughs> so let's put it, let me think of it that way. Then maybe I'll bring it up when we bring, when we discuss it with the full town council. Yeah, no, I think, I think it's that's right. appropriate. I think that's the right place to put it for, for a subset of us to take more money out of the operating budget for <laughs> for these entities. Um. And then I had another comment here. I don't ever remember us discussing or ever having uh, it being proposed that we use ARPA to reduce the new elementary school costs. Oh, yeah. I didn't mean to say that if I did. Okay. No. I don't know who said it, but it's yeah. not something I remember. No. I, I, it looks like maybe I put that in, you know, so this is this particular sentence right up to that period and getting rid of all the rest um, is, was a suggestion for me, if we're willing to make it that given how tight we are, we allocate the ARPA funds to um, town capital needs. Um, I I per, I personally wish we would do that. I felt like from the beginning we should just take all the ARPA money and use it for the town, but then that's not how it happened. <laughs> so so I put it in there for whether others on finance are willing to do that because it will it would help a lot with this whole idea of a certain amount of money for roads every year. Um, there's mm -hmm. apparently a way we can sequester ARPA. We can book it and then use it, so we could you know get 
roads up to a certain amount for each of the next three or four years, which would be really useful. And we're not going to be able to do that with the 10.5 capital. We it, it's mm -hmm. just so everyone so, knows it's penciled yeah. in at six hundred thousand roads. So Kathy, right after I introduced the idea of school committee pay at the town council meeting, you should introduce that. <laughs> I, I've said on multiple occasions that the ARPA money should be used to offset the town's capital expenses and, and the potential for borrowing for those expenses. Yeah. So yeah. using what we have left to to um, take care of some, some outstanding capital needs is perfectly fine. Okay, so that's the sentence that's just the one, one sentence paragraph. Well, it's two yeah. sentences. No, that's, but, it, yeah, let it stand alone because I, I think yeah. um, I'm not the only one who said that, certainly, uh, but I really think it needs to be emphasized and pressed that, you know, this is, uh, this is one time only money. It's not going to repeat itself. So let's use it for one time only expenses. And just so people know, you know, Crocker Farm, the school, is on the list of needing a new HVAC system to go out for debt borrowing. So we could avoid it um, for what it's penciled in on if we use some of the art, you know, so this mm -hmm. law, it captures what you just said, Bernie, it's in the pipeline is something we really want to do um, and help <laughs> us do it. Um, yeah, I, I, it just makes sense to me that, it, it, um, you know, you, you offset as many of your future capital expenditures as you can with it. Um, and the fact that I have three grandkids at Crocker Farm doesn't seem to. <laughs> well, someone at, actually uh, who swims at Puffer said, are we ever going to dredge Puffer so we don't have to keep closing it down for various kinds of um, fungi? And it's on the back burner for capital too. We don't have the money to dredge. You know, it's, you know, yeah, just well, it, 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 the, 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 the um, dredging will help, but it won't. It, yeah, it doesn't cure it. You got to take but, care of what's going on upstream before you can. Yeah, no, and that was it too. We just don't have the money. So right the now. problem with dredging on Puffer's Pond is. Oh, I'm sorry. Out. I didn't mean if I didn't mean to dredge, read. I think dredge. it would be best if we end the conversation. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just thinking of the delayed stuff. So this uh, is broadly enough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what yeah, was? We'll skip that. Uh, what is this? This uh, part of a sentence. What was there? I don't I think, think it's just part of the same paragraph, isn't it? In your budget to provide a fuller picture. In other words, I got it. The actual yeah, budget. Just, the, ne the budget yep. never shows that we had another $3 million we were spending. Yeah, that yep. just got, somehow got bumped. All of us are saying, but yep. wait a minute, we did more than this. And there was that. So ha having him artfully, that was last year's wording in your budget to provide a fuller picture. Yeah. So maybe when we clean this up, it will work. Yeah, you might just have <laughs> a backspace to, to right. my kitchen. <laughs> to get where the paragraph is that we're not seeing right now. Not to worry. Um, and just so you know, uh, in my uh, in the MMA fiscal policy committee, we did do a discussion once of how different communities are using ARPA funds. And in most communities were avoiding using ARPA funds for any recurring expenses, and therefore they were using a lot for capital. And I was thinking that for most municipalities, that's what they did. Andy, right. um, are you ready to move on? Can I ask one? I'm sorry, I asked one question on this uh, on, on ARPA. Um, so, I think what you just said kind of spurs me to ask. I mean, and, and I think that what this is ultimately saying is is can we um, can we sort of tie a bow on the ARPA? Like, can we can we see the totality the plan for the totality of the ARPA funds as it stands right now? It's supposed to come to the council on the on the eighteenth of this month. Yeah. Oh, good. Oh, so it might be too late. We might too, be too late to get this statement out there, Matt, then, because, but yes, I'd like to tie a bow. Yeah. You got it. Okay. 
Well, well, maybe that presentation will spur some some additional pieces to this. So I'll, I'll sit back and wait then. So Nick, can All we right. get we're going on to expenses for capital. Boy, it's hard to read with all this line. Yeah, on. I mean that you um, guys, hold I, on. What, Let me what, do the following up. Listen to Mark. Um, one quick thing is that while we're uh, talking about the ARPA, anything that the council does in between now and when um, we finally get this draft to them, we may need to come back and quickly make the last adjustments and have a process for doing that. Because if uh, oh, the ARPA funds are... Um, if, Andy, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I've actually moved this discussion to the 11th. Okay, so we should have, we'll have time. So then. we'll have time, right. I'm sorry, I should have told you that. I, sorry. <laughs> okay. The, the, the draft we're working on, once it's cleaned up, will be in the council's hands for the 11th, Lynn? Yeah. No. Yeah. Yes. No, I don't, I was not intending that. I, that's well, what Linda said. That's what we tried to do, and I should have called you and mentioned that we were going to do that. I don't think I can't imagine that it makes sense to do that because I was assuming that we would get one last draft and that there would be an opportunity to go ahead with the meeting that we had on the 12th, scheduled for the 12th, and that's going to be a concluding item of today's meeting. And right, then I can't. Well, yeah. we would uh, have one last chance at the draft, and uh, we would be able to conclude the uh, transfer memo for remaining items, and we'd be done for the year, hopefully. But so Andy, my, if we continue to move through this, we might get close enough to a draft that you could share to everyone tomorrow and just take comments. We might not be there, but we might. Um, yeah, I was going to do that, but I think that those comments will be wording. They're not going to be changes that. I just want to remind us that we have never discussed the guidelines at the council level at all. So I, yes, we, we did. did we did put it on the 11th. We can certainly move it. I was frankly trying to reduce what had to get shoved into the 18th. Last year, there was some last minute changes that got adopted after the first discussion. They were not major, but they were just, there were changes. So let's, why don't we finish and then decide whether or not it's going on the 12th, the 11th or the 18th. So what I did was I went to the simple markup so that you could read it better. I think we we skipped ahead a little bit. Yeah, it's one page earlier when where the stuff on the school was in there. Thank you. Uh, uh, even earlier. Yeah, we we were on capital, right? Yeah, we were yeah. on this. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, you're right. Sorry. Um, I I wanted to add or just just a uh, caution that we we say that we're going to have savings. From the new school, I, I I think we should say that we anticipate having savings because I don't know that we will. Um, you know, when when push comes to shove, um, it, yeah, it's it's in that paragraph. Well, the, the next to last, so is Lynn, the next the to last way, sentence. The way you could change it is remove the supportive. With one net zero, will generate savings in energy costs. Just put a period because that part we're sure of. <laughs> Get you're right on staffing, Bob. We we have. So it says with one net zero, we'll we'll save uh, funds in utility costs. We're completely offsetting the utility costs. Or you could just say might, um, or hopefully. Uh, 
It's two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> it's no, but uh, what we were hoping was is that the staff, the staffing will be more efficient. We said that during the campaign to pass right. that exclusion. And but but then that's okay to but Matt, he's right in not promising that. Yeah, no, I said that we need to have a qualifying word. Yeah, I would say anticipate, not hope. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I just didn't want to make it like we're counting on this. Right. Um, even though we're counting on schools Even though we are, but you know, I, I I'm no, I that's no, that's that's fair. I've never known <laughs> a new project to <laughs> to save money. I, I can tell you, well, um from my experience in uh, working and re renovating one of the schools in, in Deerfield, that all those savings, where did all those savings go? I took and out the staff. That's better. Okay. And the question of who remains, who should benefit these savings, do we need that? The town is going to benefit. It's just, as, does that go in the school budget? Where does it go, right? It's, it's not, not going to come if there's savings. It's not coming out of the school budget. I, I, I that's my pessimistic take on this whole thing. I would just strike that sentence. I would take the sentence out because we're clearly not giving it to private citizens. So it's mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I want the savings. Um, there, there's no borrowing in in the first part of 2024. So just to um, cover principal and interest costs starting in in FY25, right, Lynn? Yeah, but it doesn't start in the first half of 24. Right. No. So I'm just saying that take out that first half of 24. If, if it does, if it's happening. Um might happen in FY25, you can put it in by referencing the year we're developing the budget guidelines for. You could take everything out after interest costs, period. The first time we take up bands out is uh, it's the middle of next year. Okay. So what do you want me to do? Well, it's FY20. It is the fiscal year we're talking about. So you could just say the budget will need to cover principal and interest costs, period. Got it. Right? Yes. Yeah. So, I wanted to uh, I wanted to say right here to start and complete these <laughs> projects. That's exactly that that wasn't my that wasn't my larger point, Lynn, but I was gonna say the exact same thing and, and I was gonna try to phrase it in a non snarky way, but um but yes, I, I think you know, complete is a is yeah. A, no, it, it just yeah. to start. Yeah. Yeah, start start might be more appropriate. I I wanted to ask a question of this group, and um, I'm I guess I'm fairly neutral on it, but um, you know, there are a few allusions elsewhere in this document to working with other towns on roads mm -hmm. and sidewalks you know, and, and so some of those sort of outside the box um, funding structures that, that we've been talking about in various settings for a long time. Um, and I, I wonder if uh, collective purchasing, it, you know, some of some of those projects that are, that are, you know, collective purchasing and, and collective bidding um, services could also be included in, in that brainstorm of ideas. I was thinking it was in this section, but it's clearly not because this doesn't talk about any any sort of um, uh, collaborative funding. But maybe since I'm bringing since I'm bringing it up and since it's it's coming up sort of naturally here, um, you know, just looking at non traditional approaches to funding roads and sidewalk work, um, you know, we could we could include that here as well, and and maybe we go capture some of the language from pre the other section that has it 
as you know, in, instead of being duplicative. But I think collective purchasing, along with you know regionalization and and you know collaboration with our neighbors, I mean, every everything should sort of be on the table for this for this roads and sidewalk plan. Thank you. I'm totally supportive of keeping that in there. Yep. I also split it off so it stands alone. Yep. I mean, this does apply across the board, but I don't want to get this longer. Mm -hmm. um, it really drives me nuts that Hadley is now buying a ladder truck when we're buying a ladder I truck. Know. I know. Yeah. You know, and it's just ridiculous. And these are two million dollar purchases. <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh, you're, you're not going to keep. You know, you're not going to keep Hadley from buying a ladder truck. I know, no, I know, no. but I. <laughs> it's, Bernie, it's a whole different. There's a whole Bernie, different dynamic there. Believe me, Bernie. I knew you would say that. I'm just thinking. You know, the number of times they, that they're they're building. Just don't worry about it. But it's like, holy mackerel. And then when I pointed out what Northampton spent for a ladder truck, which was a million dollars less than ours, they said, oh, but we buy a better one. Um, uh -huh. So we, we we buy the top of the line. <laughs> but yeah, they're just so expensive. And there is, you can't share with Northampton. But in any case, I'm not, I like the idea of roads. Mm -hmm. Keep it simple. I didn't have it. I didn't have any other changes in here. Um, a process it's, question. Sorry, I, I may have missed the final, the conclusion of the discussion. Oh, we are going to oh. meet again on the guidelines, correct? We have to. After, yeah, okay. I, I assume we're going to meet after the council gives us feedback. But okay. that wasn't what Andy was assuming. Because there are a couple of things, and I don't, I really don't want to do it today, but there are a couple of things I'd like to come back to. So I just want to, but I, if we're not coming back to it, then I'll say it today, but I, I'd rather, I'd rather wait for it when we're all fresh. So Andy, we are, we are committed to, to coming back. Is that, that's right? I was hoping that we would do one more meeting and that would be it for the year. And we had tentatively put down, everybody had agreed to meeting Tuesday of next week, which is the day after the council meeting. Great. Yeah, but we're not, but Andy, you said you don't, I just need to get straight. So I have an agenda one way or the other. Are you looking to get feedback from councils on this draft? Well, there was, we're getting into Two separate things. You have made the commitment to do it on the eleventh. I I can I change the will, agenda. So we will do it on the eleventh. I can change the agenda. It. I was trying to find things I thought I think might be ready on the comfort level of the committee. My here's my suggestion. I don't know what if if I. I could work on this. Lynn could work at this. Or Andy, we could take this messy thing, accept the changes and share it with everybody. And if there's anything major that people feel needs a discussion, uh, we inform Lynn it doesn't go on the 11th. If they can be put in with, Matt, you said you have a couple things, it's comment bubbles. We can say this is a rough draft. 
you this know, isn't a comment bubble. <laughs> Paul, Paul offered some very minor suggestions that were wording changes for clarity purposes. Yep. And they're not in here, but they're they're not hard to get in. So, but Matt is talking about it sounded like something more major. Yeah, I what I'd like to do, and and the truth is, I the the point that I started that the first thing I brought up tonight or today, whatever whatever it is, that that first item, um, I I would like to, and I just I don't know, I don't think that now is the time, but. But I would like to go a little bit further and, and actually see if the committee wants to start exploring an ideal percent of property tax that supports our annual budget. And and so and I think that's something that we're not really prepared to discuss now. And I wouldn't put it in a in a comment, you know, bubble. I think I think it, it takes some deliberation. And obviously, the whole thing is up to the, the, the actual council. Um, so that, that's that's the thing. I don't want to be coy. I mean, but that, we that's did include a sentence above, and he's saying set a thing. And I, I think that's a longer discussion, and it couldn't be here. But I, I think it's a good discussion to have when we meet in in the next calendar year because the um, we don't many of those fees. We'll drive businesses away if we get too too high. There's a real tension on those other sources. We can do hard court press on the state. If the state came anywhere near to what they were playing 20 years ago, we would reduce the pressure on property taxes. But I think it is a longer, you know, if we said we don't want it ever to go higher than 69%, you know, I don't think we're not in control of something, nor is the town manager to set that percent, but I think it's a good discussion to have, and I'd love to have it, Matt, um, you know, in terms of a target, like the 10.5 for capital. Can we, yeah. you know, is, is it a target and, you know, shouldn't go any higher than whatever, or, you know, he was at someone's house with me when they said, could, could property taxes not go up one year by two and a half? You know, could we ever say 2% this year? <laughs> you know? Right. But well, and, and I don't look at receipts and maybe I'm, maybe I'm being sort of naive. I don't look at receipts as, as being, you know, permitting fees. I, I'm, I, I think we're talking about, you know, actual revenue, you know, tax revenue on, on, on business. Well, no, they are, there are permitting fees. We went up. Uh, on I, it's included. I know that's included, but I, I don't think that's what, I mean, I, we'd have to, you know, break down the analysis. I, and it, but it's more of I, I, the reason that I that I bring it up is that it's it's multi fact. You know, it's multi factor. It it, it it could be. I mean, it's not just whether it's two and a half percent or not. It's the assessments themselves, right? I mean, you know, that's that's there, there's there's multiple things that drive the amount, the actual amount of property tax revenue, mm -hmm. and there's multiple things that drive the the. So so I just I feel like it's something that we could explore further, and the guidelines would be a good place to sort of do some of that. But again, you know, I don't think at 445, now is the time to really. Well, the, the, the challenge is that there's no economic logic behind the two and a half percent cap. It's like there's no economic logic behind California's one percent cap. The, it, outside of the fact that um, it was a best guess on the part of the, the developers of this, that it would slowly shrink public spending because inflation and other factors would outstrip the two and a half percent and it would force you to, to reduce, reduce, reduce. Um, the state sort of mung things up because after two and a half passed, they increased state aid. So we all took a deep breath um, and, uh, and then watched a bunch of stuff fall apart because maintenance got, was the first thing that was cut when in that panic of two and a half. And I can tell you that as a new select doing that kind of stuff. Um, so it's a tall order to talk about that. Uh, there's one one comment I wanted to make at the very last paragraph. There's a pink uh, last page. There's a pink section here. I um, in regard to um, move up. I think up. Uh, uh, yeah, move up a little bit right there. Yeah, Amber should also strongly advocate statewide efforts to enact legislation for allow municipal governments to assess pilot payments. Um, I would again, if you're going to do statewide stuff. I would not limit myself to education. Um, I, well, I, and the way that this is written, 
actually at a statewide level. It's for tax exempt uh, institutions, period. Yeah, that's what, and, it, and that's what that's, it should say, and, because higher right. ed's an issue for Amherst. But if you want, if you want to get some tra traction statewide, you're going to have to give people the opportunity to talk about other organizations. Yeah, so you just take out tax exempt tax institutions. institutions. Yeah. I, I would say, including the reason it keeps never passing is because the moment you do that, the hospitals in Boston, which who have a great lobby, show up, and that's mm -hmm. the end of the discussion. Yeah, well, Bernie, yeah. I guess I, I had kind of assumed the opposite of what you said, and I'm curious. I think this could be a whole other discussion that I personally would be really interested in having, but is is does it get more traction when you remove it just from being higher ed? Um, because I think that's exactly what Lynn just said is is the concern I keep hearing. Um, well, you, you, you also, yeah, that's true. You you also get real pushback from all the, the colleges and universities in Boston. Oh yeah, they have their own lobby. Uh, I mean, they have their own lobby. They have their own set of lawyers. The thought here is is that there, um, and education is a major factor. You you want to look to see how many um, state reps and senators you could rope into supporting this. And so if you have a broader base to stand on, um, you, you've got a better chance of of getting something done. Right. Um, that's that's the logic behind what I'm suggesting, and that's you know in part from experience and in part from from study. Um, I mean, I'm a you know I could easily be agnostic about um, about this, but I really think that if you want to. Um, if you want to broaden the base, if you're going to talk about state uh, impact, don't talk about just the state colleges, talk about the prisons, talk about state offices, talk about other programs the state operates. Um, the same seems to be for, uh, uh, you know, tax exempt organizations. Uh, I, I mean, I, I took on an animal welfare organization in, in Deerfield because it would have cost us a great deal of money in, of, of property taxes if they, uh, they manage to get their tax exempt status. Uh, it's too easy to become tax exempt. So, and um, Andy, I, I think you, you have we? to look at you have to look at that. So, you know, you know, I'm not going to die in the ditch if it doesn't change. No, I, I, I think she just Lynn rewrote it while you were talking. Okay, uh, uh, I'm fine with it. I think we're done. Yeah. Yep. So. Um, Remember to save it, Lynn. Oh, I <laughs> am. Believe me. Do we want to take a vote to say that uh, the committee recommends the draft guidelines for council consideration as discussed at the meeting. Andy, is this is this your final recommendation or are you just sending a draft to the council for a review? I don't think you need a motion if you're looking for feedback and you're gonna um, make more changes. On Tuesday. Well, it's always up to the council because the council could say, oh, we like that draft so much, we're just going to adopt it. Yeah, dream on. <laughs> <laughs> if they, I, 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 you know, I, I don't have a problem with saying to the council, here's our work product. Um, this is our recommendation to you. Uh, your feedback is welcome. And then if Council has feedback, uh, you know, making changes, especially if the changes are only um, some phrasing, some simple phrasing. So Andy and Kathy, do you want people 
on this committee to give you feedback on this draft with all of the changes and stuff. Right now it includes- the more eyes that go through something at the end, the greater the chance that you'll pick up on something that just is wrong or doesn't make sense or- If- you well, and, I would I would turn it back if if I could be a second reader if Andy has time, or I could be he could be a second reader to get this what Lynn sends us to just do a quick that they're not typos, they're not dangling sentences, they're not we weirdnesses, and fix it. Um, and then, do people want to see it before it then goes into a council packet um, to say, boy, that's not what I thought it was. So that's a question because we, um, what do I have tomorrow? I have the school building committee in the morning, but we ought to be able to get it back. I think it should be able to be get it back by late Friday or Saturday morning. Given what I just saw, Lynn, I mean, cause you were making changes as you went along. Mm -hmm. So so I, I, you know, so that's, are you turning it over or do you want to see it again? You're going to see it again anyway. <laughs> you know, I mean, everyone will get a copy, but uh, does it move from here to something called rough first draft or whatever we label it? We could just give it to the uh, council for the meeting on the 11th, uh, just saying this is the current draft for the, the count that the committee has. And uh, if you have any comments on it, they're welcome. Is that, okay with, that? Is that okay with everyone? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Thumbs up. I, I would specifically ask the council if, if there's, an area that's missing that they would like to see addressed. I think that's more important than wordsmithing at this point. Right. Um, that's a great suggestion, Bob, because we have a counselor who's a good wordsmither. So we'll try to ask for something important missing or something that they 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 wildly would never say it that way. <laughs> no, not. Okay. I was going to mm -hmm. say, if there is wordsmithing desired, I would emphasize that any non, you know, substantive wordsmithing should be done by sending that feedback as like a marked up version or something back and not done in the council meeting, just for the sake of all of our sanity. <laughs> okay, that's terrific. Okay, so we have a plan. And we will meet again next week on Tuesday. And anything that remains on the guidelines and the transfer memo. Athena, do you think that I think then we really don't have a need for another meeting this year if we can finish those two items? Holly, Holly, I have one request of you or or um keeper of the presentation that was given to us, those tables that we're referring to, can you just pull them out and send them so we could actually put them in the report? The uh, the, the the tables that look like the, the revenue table and the expenditure oh, table. On pages the draft like 32 the and 33 of the indicators. Because it's in a PDF, we can't we can't pull it out? Yep, absolutely. I can send it in, um, in a, another PDF version just separately or an Excel version or whatever works. Whatever pulls those two out, we then can incorporate them into this. If, it, if it's an Excel, you can you can move it into Word. Without yeah, can move it in. Trouble. If it's Excel, yeah. it's really easy to. Yeah. Sure. Who did you want me to send it to? I send it to Andy. If you send it to Andy with a copy to me, I'll know we we have it, and um, it's pretty easy then to just yeah well, take the old version out and put the new version in. Yeah. What, what, what Hollywood Absolutely. happened in prior years, and Kathy had the experience more recently with the um, capital JCPC 
is that uh, when we got to the end, um, Sean would just plop it into the final version. So we're just transferring it from Sean to doing it, but he would he would do it as kind of the last step of the process. But we don't have to do that if we have the file. We can just bring it in, you know. Right. So it, we can it, just take care of it. And yeah. Don't have to wait to um, bother you again later. Thank you. Yep. Okay. So, um, any other business that we didn't anticipate? Anybody we... show up in the audience? I doubt it, but I will look. No, it's a zero still. <laughs> yep. So, at that point, I guess. Uh, we can declare ourselves adjourned. Thank right. you. Thanks, everyone. Right. Thanks, sir. Good work. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Absolutely, Andy. I'm sorry.